Today's session, I'll, I'll get started. Um, but everyone's been hanging to get in front of a computer and do a webinar late on a Friday afternoon. Um, it's the highlight of the week. So um, what we're going to do today, as the um, webinar instruction was, as the advertisement said, um, this is just a real brief uh, update as to um, how to comply and the compliance uh, um, status with using Fronius inverters for the the uh, new South Australian um, regulations. Um, so yeah, I'd like to um, welcome everyone, um, even some of our friends at SunGrow we've got out there as well. So welcome to you guys as well. So what we'll go through today, um, and I'll start through the webinar here. So my name's Rod Dewar. Uh, I'm the Solutions Manager at Fronius Australia. Um, been there for about 10 years. And um, one of the things I'm looking after at the moment is the regulations um, and how to how to comply with those in South Australia. Um, so what I will start off with today is, as I said, it is just a brief um, uh, coverage today. Um, there'll be a few, um, might have a little bit of question time at the end, um, but I don't have anyone else helping me here. It's just me. I'll, if I see questions come up, um, ones that um, I can answer now, uh, and then are not too long, then I'll, I'll try and address those where otherwise um, we will be running a, a more detailed webinar next week, uh, next Thursday, and I'll give you some details of that um, towards the end of the webinar. Okay, so um, first thing to start off with is um, just on the agenda. So I'll just run through um, two of the requirements really um, that have become uh, mandatory as 28th of September. Um, so that'll be the, the voltage ride through requirement for inverters. And um, I guess the biggest topic at the moment, which is the remote disconnect, reconnect um, of the um, plants. So we'll cover the inverters and then we'll cover um, of the remote disconnect, we'll cover what the current options are now uh, and the tech providers. Uh, and then also we've got some news that we'll cover um, with next week, uh, the new option that will be coming along. Uh, and then also some options after that going forward into next year. Um, so yeah, voltage ride through. Um, so the that one's just gonna be pretty short. Basically the, there was tests that needed to be done for a, a EMO um, for the inverters to ride through grid disturbances. So uh, we got those tests done um, fairly quickly. We we're on the first listing that went out on the um, energy and mining website. So all the SNAP inverters are compliant with that and can be installed except for the Galvo. Uh, and on for the Gen 24 inverters, uh, obviously the SIMO um, is just hitting the market as we speak. Um, that has also passed the, the test as well. If you want to look at the updated list of that, just or if you need proof, then um, here's the link here. Um, by the way, this presentation will be sending, uh, we can send out at the end of the presentation. Uh, so you've got information uh, on that. Okay, so yeah, the main topic really is the remote disconnect reconnect. Uh, so at the moment, the current uh, relevant agents, if you're installing uh, Afronius, um, as per the listed, is uh, you have Intelli, IntelliHub metering, uh, you have the SAPN uh, registration or um, relevant agent using a switched in device, you have SAPN also using a Mondo UBI controller, and also SAPN using the WattWatches uh, controller as well. Um, so with that, of those particular ones, the uh, IntelliHub one that's using the actual, I'm not going to go into too much detail here, by the way, uh, the IntelliHub is using uh, the current or the new to be installed um, DNSP smart meter from IntelliHub uh, and using the extra contacts that they have on, those, uh, on that meter in order to um, disconnect the inverter from the installation uh, or potentially if you wanted to use the, um, the IO ports on that. Um, then switched in, uh, I've got another slide which will go into that in a minute. Uh, Mondo, their UBI controller, um, it's quite a nifty controller as well. It does uh, a lot of um, different controls with batteries, with PV, with various loads on site. Um, it does require um, installation of CTs, uh, etc. and then it connects to the inverters and controls them from there. Uh, also, what watches? is a device as well. We'll come out some more information on that. Uh, we're in touch with Watch Watchers to get some more detailed info for, for you guys on that. And that's a device which gets mounted into the switchboard 
uh, and can also do um, various load controls and controls the inverter uh, as well. Um, because we've been working fairly closely with switched in, I'll just give you some um, key points, I guess, if you're looking at doing the switched in option, uh, because the switched in option does have um, certain, you know, add additional value proposition in there if you're looking for some additional things. Um, it is very easy to install. Um, it just kind of plugs into, uh, connects directly with the inverters um, via the Ethernet um, or via the internet router. So there's no need to install um, CTs uh, with that. Also, we're using the switched in device for um, our um, HBS scheme at the moment with the SIMA hybrid. So it gives you enablement for virtual power plants and eligibility, eligibility for um, various ranges of other schemes uh, as well. Um, they do have an offer on at the moment for um, free advanced energy monitoring um, until April next year. Uh, so that gives you uh, more advanced controls and more advanced things you can you can do uh, with that. Um, and also, depending on who you um, uh, who you speak to or what kind of access they can give you, um, there is the possibility of accessing the data manager web interface uh, remotely um, via a tunnel um, if you wanted to have that um, that capability remotely let's say you're doing a bit of energy management or something and if you want to uh, use that then you may need to um, uh, you know do some changes remotely but um, best thing for that is to consult switched in um, directly for more information on that um, they'll they'll give you an update on, on those um, so the one of the ones that, so they were the they're the options that we're talking about right at this minute. Um, we are, however, been working very hard in the background to um, come up with a an easy option that um, doesn't require any additional components. Um, at the moment, it's not totally finalised at the moment, but the solution we're working with is with SAPN as the agent, um, and then using communication from our um, cloud platform down to the inverters. Uh, in order to um, shut them down or to give them a command when um, when we get when the directive comes from either SA government or from our EMO. Um, some of the key points on that really uh, is that it will be free. So registering with uh, SAPN will be will be free. You'd go through um, the process as with the uh, with the other processes at the moment. That's still yet to be finalised. Exactly what that looks like. Um, and we'll be working with SAPN um, over the next uh, few days uh, in order to, to get some more clarity and, and, uh, and finalise that. One of the key points, I guess, uh, with this solution is that if you do have a Fronius inverter or Fronius system uh, with a smart meter, a Fronius smart meter in there, when we get given the command to shut the system down, um, we will actually be um, uh, shutting it down to zero export. So we won't actually be ramping the inverter completely down to zero. If the meter's there, uh, you will be able to self-consume um, on site uh, and it'll just be a, um, uh, a zero export site until we've been told to release that, um, that shutdown and then it'll go back to the reinst reinstated, the original export limit, what it was before, if it's an export limited system. Um, if it's not an export limited system, then obviously the export limit will be completely removed. Um, that functionality is only available if you have the Fronius smart meter in there because otherwise there's no way of knowing what the, the grid um, export or import is. Um, so there could be an incentive, I guess, for any of you guys who are um, installing a, a bit of Fronius gear out there. Um, it might be something for the customer to consider. Um, in general, we think having a Fronius smart meter is, is a really good option for, um, you know, looking at your load profile, um, changing your um, uh, you know, changing your habits at home, and the way you use your energy, and also we've got quite a few features within SolarWeb um, coming up that allows you to help calculate for uh, battery systems going forward and what they will um, uh, you know what they what will they would do. Um, if if however a system doesn't have a Fronius smart meter. Um, the, you still get a what we call you know a zero percent um, command, and because there's no way of looking at the export, the inverter will be going down to um, to zero watts at the inverter. So there is an advantage to have the smart meter um, in this, these particular cases. Um, so 
the other thing then, um, so I'll just kind of complete that a little bit. So with this particular one as well, as I said, we're still in um, talks with SAPN to get this finalised. Um, there's a few more uh, arrangements we need to make with them and also in our back end in order how to, to register it, uh, register these systems. There'll be more information coming that over the next few days and early next week, um, but that's all in progress at the moment. And uh, we'll be able to give you more further information on that uh, next week. Uh, if you are doing your SEG uh, applications at the moment, um, if you are looking to want to use this particular solution, um, there isn't the um, uh, potential on that uh, on your SEG form. You don't have that selection yet um, because it's not officially registered uh, with the OTR as an agent and as a technology provider. However, as soon as that happens, we will put a notice out to industry um, that it is that is available. At this stage, we can't give a definite date, um, but our hopes are that by the end of next week, um, that will all be up and running uh, and you'll be able to use that, um, that selection. Um, then going forward as well, um, we've got a collaborative um, uh, arrangement with DEX and GreenSync uh, in doing our new API, which is currently being developed uh, as well um, at our end, in order for you know com to comply and also to um, be part of VPP um, networks and VPP cases in uh, in South Australia. So that's being worked on at the moment. That would be also when that comes out with be through Dex and GreenSync, but also uh, likely to have um, SAPN as the relevant agent. Um, with the flexible exports, we're also looking at um, talking to GreenSync uh, with that as well. That is further on down the track and that work probably won't be until next year um, for that, but just to give you a bit of information of um, where that's coming uh, and when it is. Um, as I said, uh, if you want some, uh, this is really just a brief overview uh, of what you can do now uh, and what's coming next week. Um, if you do want some more information as we get more information at hand as well, uh, we are running another webinar next Thursday um, on the 8th of October at 5.30 SA time, so 6 o'clock here in, uh, in Melbourne in the shutdown zone. Um, and this will cover, cover the various options that I've just spoken about in more detail um, and also some more information of where you get more detail at those particular ones. Um, also, be, we'll have more information and update around the, um, the pathway for using the SAV and Fronius software um, solution uh, that will be coming next week. Uh, so the link on the page there, um, that's the link to the new webinar next week. Um, we will put that out on our, on our website and various social medias um, in order for you to, um, to attend that and not to miss out. Um, so I might just have a quick look at some of the questions here. Um, let's see, one site. Correct that if there's, um, is it correct that if a site has one or more than one Fronius Vita, every invert on site, I can't see the question over here. Uh, it requires a data manager. Um, for the switched in solution um, at the moment, uh, that could be the case. However, we are in touch with switched in um, to get that uh, amended. Uh, I don't have a timeline on that um, for that, but that's something that they are working on and should be able to take care of. Um, probably best to contact us directly uh, on that one so we can give an update uh, with that one uh, as well. Um, so the API solution, so the the solution that we've got next week um, is uh, like a workaround API solution. So that will only be with SAPN, uh, that particular one. The one going forward that we're looking at with DEX, um, DEX will be the first partner uh, with that next year. Um, however, that will be more of a, a public um, or like an open API that, that others can actually take part in um, and we'll work with partners um, as that come, uh, come, comes along. Um, so, will it be possible to go uh, be through other agents as well? I think that was probably referring maybe to the, the solution next week. Um, no, that will just be through um, SAPN. Um, the expected date, as I said, we don't have an exact date for that next week. However, we do um, we do envisage that will by the end of the end of the week uh, we will have that listed um, through the OTR and also in the drop down menu in your SEG. Um, uh, 
SEG application. Um, someone's asking about what happens remote uh, South Australia where internet is limited. Um, well, that's, uh, you would probably, there is various solutions that you can use with 3G modems. Um, uh, we don't really have an internal one uh, to use on that, but there is some Wi-Fi dongles that you could potentially use. We have used of others, uh, heard of others using that. Um, with that, you would have pretty much, you would have the same issue um, all, all around. And that particular solution, depending if you, that may be something you could do with IntelliHub. Um, IntelliHub does actually use um, 3G, uh, Telstra 3G on their uh, meters. Uh, so with their meters, uh, they may have more availability or coverage in those remote areas. You will have to um, look at the IntelliHub solution to see if that fits for your um, wiring configuration uh, as well. That So um, I think so. So someone was asking about in regards to the zero export. So um, so through another age, I'm not quite sure um, on the zero export one. I mean, in, in general, if you have a zero export system from the outset, then uh, there's no requirement for that to actually um, be, uh, to have the remote shutdown on that. I'm not sure if that's the, if what's what you were meaning. Um, so someone's asked with solar analytics for API control. Um, so that would be, again, uh, not for this solution next week. Uh, that would be one that we're working with next year. Um, Dex, as I said, is the partner we're working with first, but um, we don't see any reason why Solar, solar analytics would uh, would not be able to do that as well. Um, <clears throat> so, the someone's asking um, if uh, if you say front end versus compliance, especially when they propose any third party solution. So compliance, um, the compliance of the inverter for the shutdown, uh, it's not the actual inverter that needs to be compliant. It's the site. So inverter manufacturers can obviously um, offer solutions internally. However, um, it's not actually just as it is that's the, the customers, the end customers responsibility to have an agent and to be available. Um, obviously the inverter manufacturers can assist and make that easier. Um, however, it's not exactly the inverter manufacturers responsibility, um, uh, the inverters manufacturers responsibility to, um, uh, to comply with that. Okay, see so what else we've got here. All right, well, I think that's pretty much most of the uh, um, the uh, uh, options or most things. That one other person's asked about the smart media, only way to maintain self-consumption. Um, any other solutions? Uh, not, well, I mean, you could if you use something like a switched in potentially, um, if you have the Fronia smart meter, uh, then the solution next week in order to do the self-consumption and maintain self-consumption you will need to do it with the um, using the Fronia smart meter uh, on that one. Okay, uh, all right. Well, that's um, pretty much. Uh, I'll just cover that at the moment. I said um, a few more questions, just a brief session. For anyone interested in getting more details on all this, um, please join us next week uh, on Thursday the eighth at five thirty, um, and hope to see you there if you want some more information. Okay. Thanks everyone for attending and enjoy your Friday and enjoy your long weekend over in South Australia. I'll see you then.